27 years old and in his prime, Joe Lewis would enter the war in 1941. But you see, in 1935, Joe Lewis would knock out Timo Cornell and Max Baer, former heavyweight champions. And he would be on his way. Who would ever know that a young man from Alabama would become a phenomenon? Now, Joe Lewis would eventually face the Black Yulin, Germany's own Max Schmeling in 1936. And that was a very interesting year because Germany would hold the Summer Olympic Games in Berlin. But Jesse Owens would win four gold medals in those games. And this would upset Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime. So Max Melling was sent on a mission to make sure he would get even with the United States. And what better way than to take out their best fighter, Joe Lewis. So Yankee Stadium, Joe Lewis would face the Black Yulin and be knocked out in the 12th round. And this would upset the United States. You see, there was a political game being played at this time. And Joe Lewis was a pawn for the United States. And Max Schmeling was a pawn for Germany. And Joe Lewis wanted nothing else but to get even with Max Schmeling. But Mike Jacobs couldn't think of a better way to get even with Germany than for Joe Lewis to become heavyweight champion of the world. You see, Max Melling was in line to face Jimmy Braddock because they knew Jimmy Braddock couldn't eventually hold that title too long. And they couldn't take a chance of Max Melling taking a title back to Germany because they would eventually become the premier country if they had the heavyweight champion of the world in their corner. So Jimmy Braddock wanted a retirement fund. And he said, I would give Joe Lewis an opportunity, but for 10% of his earnings for the next 10 years, which would be the remainder of his career. So Joe Lewis was he be set to face Jimmy Braddock in 1937? He would knock out Braddock in eight rounds. And he would become the heavyweight champion of the world. But that would not be enough for Joe Lewis. You see, he was the people's champion. And he had to get redemption over Max Melling. So he would give Max Melling a shot in New York's Yankee Stadium. And he would knock out Max Melling in one astonishing round breaking his ribs, sending him to the hospital for several weeks. And eventually, Joe Lewis would have what is called the Bum of the Month Club. He would fight fighters such as Johnny Paycheck, Lou Nova, Billy Kahn. And the United States would eventually be in trouble because they would have a war 1942, Joe Lewis would volunteer his services to the United States Army. And Franklin D. Roosevelt would call Joe Lewis to the front of the White House, front lawn, squeezing his muscles, stating that we need these muscles for Germany. And Joe Lewis would register for the peacetime draft and be declared 1A by the Chicago Draft Board. Now at this point in time, the war had began in 1941. But as he was champion, 
he would gracefully go over and offer his services in whichever way needed. But his agenda was to make sure that all soldiers' morale was uplifted. So Joe Lewis with a crowd at Madison Square Garden January 9th, 1942 his opponent would be Buddy Bear Buddy Bear who's the brother of Max Bear stood 6 foot 6 inches and weighed 250 pounds and he had been beaten previously in that spring with a crowd of 16,889 looking on at this event Joe Lewis would snap back the head of Buddy Bear with a sensational fast combination. He would drop Buddy Bear. Buddy Bear would struggle to get back up, climbing onto the ropes. Within seconds, he would be knocked out. And Buddy Bear would be caught saying later on, but fighting Joe Lewis was like fighting a man with a baseball bat. The winner's share of that purse was $65,200. After deductions of training fees and expenses, he donated the balance of his earnings, $47,500 to the Navy Relief Fund. Now Mike Jacobs would take a part of that money, $37,229, making a grand total, $88,000, $807. Well, don't you know that Joe Lewis was paid a complete check and had to pay the taxes of that check, although he donated the money. Now, I want to make this clear of what we're talking about. Mike Jacobs donated $37,229 of Joe Lewis's previous earnings. He would take that and add it to the $47,500, grand total of $88,807. And Joe Lewis had to pay taxes on the $88,807. Unbelievable. And Mike Jacobs was able to write off the $37,229 that he donated from a previous purse of Joe Lewis to collaborate with the $47,500, making it a grand total of $88,807. So Mike Jacobs would benefit from that cause. Joe Lewis would not. He would have to pay taxes on that grand total. I can't make this stuff up. Now Joe Lewis would, once again, donate his time. This time for the Army Relief. But first, he would get a phone call from Truman Gibson. You see, Jack Dempsey would ask if Joe Lewis would be kind enough to give an exhibition for the Navy Relief. And of course, Joe Lewis would be more than happy to do so. But once again, he was paid for that fight against Abe Simon, March 27, 1942, New York's Madison Square Garden. And he would knock out Abe Simon with no problem at all. At a dinner that was given by the Navy Relief Society on March 10th at New York's Madison Square Garden, Joe Lewis would utter the words as he stood nervously at the podium. I have only done what any red-blooded American could do. We're going to do our part, and we will win, because we are on God's side. 
Now the thing with Jack Dempsey, Jack Dempsey was a previous heavyweight champion. You see, in 1919, he would knock out Jess Willard in Toledo, Ohio, to become the heavyweight champion of the world. He would destroy Jess Willard in four brutal rounds. But Jack Dempsey was spotted with an army uniform and black patent leather shoes. He claimed that he would be involved in a war that took place while he was a young man. You see, Jack Dempsey created a sin. He lied to claim that he was in part of the war. Now the thing with Muhammad Ali, he was a gold medalist in the Olympic Games. And he was very proud of honoring his country. But when he came back and was told that he couldn't be served in a restaurant and he had to sit in the back of a bus with the gold medal around his chest, he would go to the nearest bridge in Louisville and throw that medal in the water because he felt disgraced. And from that point on, after joining the nation of Islam, he refused to join the war. Jack Dempsey lied about it and said that he was part of the war. And he never did enter the war. And Jack Dempsey became heavyweight champion of the world. And Joe Lewis didn't want that under his conscience because he loved this country. And he would do anything that he felt would be worthy of honoring this country. And Jack Dempsey had asked Joe Lewis if he would do an exhibition for the Navy Relief. Joe Lewis, in his mind, thought that he would be doing Jack Dempsey a service, giving Jack Dempsey full credit for putting that match together. Because he wanted Jack Dempsey to hold his honor for this country during a time in need. And when Joe Lewis faced Abe Simon, he was hit with a check and taxed on that check. Amazing. Now on fight night, Joe Lewis knocked out Abe Simon in the sixth round. Ring and Ox announcer, Don Dumpy, had used the knockout to symbolize the country's resolve to defeat Japanese and German soldiers, who earlier in 1942 clearly had the upper hand. He said, we won't stop punching, just as Joe Lewis, till we win. From his purse of $45,882, Joe deducted expenses and gave $36,146 to the Army Relief Fund. The contributions from Jacobs and Simon bought a total of donations to $55,000. Joe Lewis was once again charged for back taxes on those purses. And it became a time when he was playing golf and someone had walked up to him and asked, are you Joe Lewis? And when he said yes, he was handed a documentation from the IRS stating that he was $60,000 in debt of taxes. And that machine kept running over and over and over again. And now he was forced to continue to fight. Way past his prime, he would fight fighters, such as Tammy Marielli. He would face Joe Walcott twice. He would finally make a comeback after
to retirement. And he would face Ezra Charles in 1950. 1951, after being stopped by Rocky Marciano in the eighth round, he would retire for good. That took place in New York's Madison Square Garden. But during his time of exhibitions, Joe Lewis would fight the following men. He would face George Nicholson. June 5th, 1942. Lewis joined the United States Army and toured giving boxing exhibitions. Now he was scheduled to face Billy Kahn on October 12th, 1943. But this bout was scheduled and canceled. So in 1944, November 3rd, he would face Johnny Denson, Detroit, Michigan, two-round exhibition. He knocked his opponent out. Charlie Grump, Baltimore, Maryland, three-round exhibition. D. Abeson and Jimmy Bell and Johnny Davis. D. Amen twice, Dan Merritt. He would face fighters such as Alfred Big Boy Brown, that was an Eddie Futch protege, Bobby Lee, and Bob Frazier. He would face Alfred Big Boy Brown again, December 11th, 1945. We would face him a few more times. Now, in 1946, he would face Billy Kahn. New York's Madison Square Garden, knocking him out in eight rounds. He'd be in the ring with Cleo Evans and Wayne Powell. 1947, February 7th, he would face Arturo Godoy, Chilean, who he faced twice for the title. Ten-round exhibition. February 10th, Art Ramsey, San Salvador, three-round exhibition. February 10th, Walter Harper, San Salvador, three-round exhibition. We face a true good doorway once again. Art Ramsey, Dick Underwood, Bob Foxworth, Jersey Joe Walcott, he would knock out in the Bronx, New York, in 11 rounds. Lose the face, Pat Kaminsky, a former Max Bear opponent, 1948, six round exhibition. Bob Gardner, several times, all exhibitions. Bernie Re Reynolds, Kid Rivera, Ray Augusta, Arturo Godoy, and Pat Kaminsky, Willie James, Sterling Ingram, Hart Sweden. He would face Nino Valdez and George Fent. Elmer Violent Ray. All for the betterment of his country. Many of them world class fighters. Pat Valentino and Jack Flood and Willie Bean, Annie Walker, Rex Lane, Gene Jones, Nino Valdez, Sid Peaks. Never got a dime for any of these fights. Leo Jackson, Willie Johnson, Nino Valdez once again. Unbelievable. Salute to Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis was unfortunately taken advantage of. You see, in that military, 1942 and 1946, it was a segregated army. And a majority of Joe Lewis's exhibitions were for white establishments. And Joe Lewis eventually said, wait a minute. What am I going to get an opportunity to fight for the black soldiers? And why aren't they getting entertainment such as Bob Hope and others? I don't think they've seen Jack Dempsey or Gene Tunney once since they've been there. 
So he went down to Truman Gibson. Went to his office. And he said, it's not right down here. And Jackie Robinson and, and Ray Robinson were both having problems and Joe Lewis got, got it all straightened out. You see, Joe Lewis was a serviceman to this country. And he was a private when he made the comment about we're all red blood Americans and together we're on God's side. They made Joe Lewis a private. And eventually they made him a sergeant, but his only job was to give exhibitions and to make sure that the black fighters stayed in line. Meanwhile, Jack Dempsey was named a lieutenant. And he had in his contract that when he went before World War II, his only job was to take photo ops of giving the servicemen lessons in fighting. And he would take pictures and... Gene Tunney who served this country well. He was part of the AEF. Salute to Gene Tunney. But Joe Lewis, his services will never be forgotten. And he himself was a credit to his race. The human race. This is Scrap of Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Series, stating all great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Salute to all the veterans. My dad was a private in World War II. He also served in the Korean War for the Marines. My grandfather was a part of the Army. I had a very good, close Jewish friend. His name was Teddy. Met him when I was when he was 80 years old, back in the 1980s. He earned a Purple Heart. Salute to him. Salute to all that served, and salute to those who were not able to serve. But unfortunately, there's still a problem in this country. that need to be dealt with. African Americans are not getting the equal justice that they deserve. But salute to Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali. For in their own way, trying to create justice. Shout out to Gene Tunney for his services in the war. Shout out to all the fighters who participated in the war. Mickey Walker, Ray Robinson, Bo Jack, Bob Montgomery, Ike Williams, Ezzy Charles, and many, many more. Benny Leonard. Salute to all of them. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Absolutely.